this guy. And this is uh, the 1114 question. <clears throat> and we have this, and we have this, and we got this, and uh, we got a lot of this. So I'm not gonna draw out all of it, so I'm just gonna kind of go line that way. And we have that coming this way, that coming this way, this coming this way, and this coming this way. And uh, I think that's it. So basically in this one here, uh, so it, it was asking um, if we did the hydrogenation reaction basically of that, uh, what are we going to get in that? So um, if one equivalent of H2 is present so that three isomers are formed, um, what is the product? So really when we add H2, even though this thing is ginormous in terms of its actual uh, sort of structure there, it really uh, is only the double bonded area that really does uh, kind of come into play. And <clears throat> what that basically means is just like a normal alkene that we talked about uh, in terms of what happens with the hydrogenation reaction is basically we have a double bond that when we add the H2 to it becomes a single bond and then those two H's get added on. So I think the key here is it says uh, when we do this is partially hydrogenated with one H2. When we add one H2, and again, obviously this is all those carbons and stuff coming this way. But when we add one H2 to it, it essentially is going to really only attack, say, one of these double bonds. And so one of the ways you could draw the product would be turning one, say that first double bond into a single bond. And then the rest of it would be exactly the same. I ran out of room there, but everything to the right there would be exactly the same. The only other thing that would change obviously is just that first double bond became a single bond. Another isomer would be not to make this guy a single bond, but would be to turn this guy into a single bond. And then everything would be kind of the same at the beginning here. This guy would still be double bonded. And then this guy would end up being a, a single bond on this way. And then the rest of, you know, the rest of all those carbons and stuff that's attached there uh, would happen at that point. So because it says sort of one equivalence, you're just adding one H2. If you wanted to take out both of these at once, you would need like two of these guys, right? Uh, one would take out this first one, the second one would take out the second one and make it a single bond and all that. And the completely hydrogenated one would be, you added enough, uh, basically, um, you added enough of the H2s to basically take away all of the triple bonds. So there's another triple bond in there. I think I missed one, I'm sorry. So we had one more triple bond that actually was our double bond that was here before it went down to all that. So in this acid, if you look on that table, there's basically three double bonds. For every one of these H2s that you do, it's just gonna turn it into a single bond. So if you did one, you would get one single bond here. The rest would still remain double if you did just one, it could have done that guy instead and made that one a single bond, which would be your second isomer. And if you did just one H2, it could have made this guy a single bond, which would give you three isomers. And if you wanted to take all of them out at once, um, like part B of the question, you would need three of them, one for here, one for here, and one for here as well. So that would take out all three of them. Any questions on that one there? Yeah, so it's really equivalent to just the basic, um, just the basic alkene reaction that we talked about is basically an addition reaction. So in an addition reaction, you basically turn this double bond into a single bond, 
everything else remains the same. And this is a symmetrical addition because you're adding one H to one side, I'll circle it, and one H to the other side. And the same thing happens in each of these things that I box. They just basically become single bonds. Uh, so part A was talking about the three isomers. One isomer would be making the first guy a single bond. Second isomer would be leaving the guy first guy a double bond, making the second one a single bond. And the third isomer would be making the third guy a single bond and leaving the first two as double bonds. And part B would be if you added three H2s, that would be enough to convert all of these guys into single bonds. Basically what we're doing is uh, we're um, basically uh, hydrogenating it. We're basically making an alkene into an alkane if we completely got rid of all the double bonds. And again, nothing else on that big giant molecule uh, would be different other than that of just simply uh, changing the double bonds into single bonds. And then obviously the hydrogen's in when you do that. Question on that one there. All right, and the other one was 1140. So since I found it here, uh, let me just try to find that question real quick. It's gotta be at the end of the chapter, I'm assuming. <clears throat> we got an eleven forty, correct? Was the other question? <clears throat> so, uh, give the IUPAC name for each of the ones depicted in the ball and stick model. Is that the other question you have? On that one? Okay. So uh, 1140, and I'll apologize for my really bad uh, drawing here, but uh, I'll do my best to draw. So we got kind of like a white circle, uh, got a black circle there, another one there, another one there. So I'll just color these guys in. Okay, and we got white circle there, white circle, black circle, white circle, white circle coming back down this way, kind of a black circle, white, white, black circle, white, white, and coming this way. And I think I missed up there, we have, what looks like a triple bond right there, I think. Okay, so in the in the question, which is 1140, uh, you basically have black circles, which will represent with red circles here. Uh, but usually in model kits, uh, the black circles represent carbon. And you also have white circles. And usually in like a molecular model type kit, uh, those represent hydrogen. So if we just kind of basically uh, turn this sort of ball and stick model into sort of all of our symbols, that top guy would be a hydrogen connected to a carbon that is triple bonded to another carbon that is single bonded to a carbon that has two hydrogens attached to another carbon that has two hydrogens attached uh, to another carbon that has two hydrogens attached and another carbon that also has two hydrogens attached. And lastly, coming down, this guy was also a carbon over here carbon with three hydrogens attached. So if we just want to want to simplify it, we have uh, basically H, C, triple bond, C, CH2, 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 uh, CH2, and CH3, if I didn't mess up counting that. So they wanted you to name this. So we want the longest continuous carbon chain here. So that's going to be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that guy should be heptane based off of it. It does have a triple bond here. So our heptane will then become, oops, heptine, Y-N-E, because of the triple bond. And in this particular case, we always want to give the triple bond the smallest number. And we do have to give the location on that. Uh, so it would make sense to number this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this would then be one 
heptine would be the name of this guy, as there's no other groups attached. And the longest, obviously, continuous carbon chain here would be all of those guys together. Any questions on that one? Looking at the B of that question, we again have a model. And if you sort of dissect the model, uh, we got something that looks like this. That's a double bond. Uh, we got this, uh, this coming this way. We got this and this. Good. All right. And we got that. And we got this and this. And we got that. And we got a little connection this way. And again, a connection uh, this way as well. So if we kind of translate this again into sort of formula, uh, this is basically a ring structure here. And we have a double bond happening here. And basically we have a CH2 attached and a CH3. So we would want to uh, name this ring and that's a five member ring with a double bond in it. So that's gonna be cyclopentane because it has a double bond that again would be cyclopentene. And uh, this ethyl group here looks like it would be a carbon number one. So this would be one ethyl cyclopentene. Other questions I could help you with in terms of that. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I actually just have a <laughs> the actual newer version of the book and they actually have some different things in different chapters. So I was able to find the, the online of the R version of the book here. Other questions on, you know, acids, organic, that I can help you with. Any other questions that uh, you may have? And again, I do have the book in front of me, so uh, <laughs> the actual right version, so I, I can look up all my problems now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll give an example of, of a weak base and to answer the other question, uh, the other question is our finals actually uh, I believe two weeks from today, believe it or not, it is December, I wanna say second, is that what it is, I think? It is the Wednesday of finals week. Uh, so believe it or not, next week is our last week. So we have the exam on Monday, lecture on Wednesday, and then I believe after that, a week from Wednesday or two weeks from today should be our final. And it does start at about 4.45 on that Wednesday. So it does start a little bit earlier than our normal class meeting. So in terms of uh, bases, uh, there are strong bases. And uh, as we talked about, a lot of strong bases will uh, really have uh, hydroxide in it. So things like sodium hydroxide, uh, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, uh, strontium hydroxide. Yeah. Some people will go with magnesium hydroxide as well. So a lot of these guys that have the OH in it are, are really oftentimes sort of uh, strong bases. And that leaves us some sort of weak bases that we uh, sometimes will commonly see. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so for example, the most common probably weak base that we'll come across a lot of times is uh, ammonia. So NH3 is considered a weak base. Um, and it's really because uh, it doesn't have hydroxide in it. So remember a strong base is a strong electrolyte. So when it goes into solution, it will 100% break apart into say sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And this formation of hydroxide is really what makes it a, a base you know, is that ability to form OH minus. 
Now, NH3 doesn't really have the ability to do that by itself. It can't just really break apart into OH minus. It actually needs to go and react with some water to do that. And because it's a base, it's going to accept an H plus, like we talked about. It's going to act as a Bronsted base. And obviously, water in this case will act as the Bronsted acid. And when it does that, it makes NH4 plus and OH minus. So it's still considered a base because it can react with water uh, to form OH minus, but it's not a uh, it's not a strong base because it really does need to do just that. It needs to kind of find somebody to react with in order to produce hydroxide. And that's very different than all these guys that are strong bases. These guys essentially don't need to find anybody. They just essentially need to go in and go for a swim and basically um, produce um, a hydroxide just from doing that. Again, something like NH3 has to go find water. Something like F minus as well needs to go find some water and do a similar reaction to make hydroxide. So that's why these guys that are weak bases, they oftentimes will not have uh, like OH minus in their actual formula, but they're still considered bases because they have the ability to actually still produce hydroxide or OH minus as a result of a reaction. And uh, that's again why they're considered sort of bases still, because that's your general definition of a base is something that has that ability to produce hydroxide. But again, they, they kind of have to take the route of reacting with something uh, to allow that to happen. They just can't kind of do it by themselves. They have to go find somebody and do a reaction. So there's a lot of other sort of uh, weak bases. A lot of them, uh, for example, will have carbons in it and hydrogens. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find here. Maybe, uh, another example. Um, you know, something like, for example, NO2 minus doesn't have hydroxide in it. Again, it's going to do a similar type of reaction with water. It's got to go find some water to make that hydroxide. And again, these guys really don't need to do that. They just pretty much need to go in and they will break apart. And as you can remember, maybe from electrolytes, a strong base is a strong electrolyte, 100% breaks apart. A weak base is a weak electrolyte, so we remember these reversible sort of reactions, and a majority of the time they are on this side of it, and that means that they're going to make a lot less hydroxide, and that's why they're considered weak bases because they don't produce as much as something like sodium hydroxide, which when you put it into solution produces a lot of OH- very quickly. Other questions? <clears throat> Number 13.48, sure, let's take a look. Uh, chapter 13 here. 13. Yeah, well, that's probably at the end of the chapter there, I'm assuming. All right, is this the one involving uh, like fen, fen, right? I'm assuming. Okay, so uh, let's see here. So we have uh, this structure here. 
Um, we have this, we have this, and we have this. So this is uh, 1348. So first off, we want to label it as a primary, secondary, or tertiary. So remember that it's really uh, this carbon, actually it's the nitrogen that is attached uh, to it, since it's in the main, and that nitrogen is attached directly to one other uh, carbon. So this should be a primary amine. So remember, uh, we're looking at the nitrogen and how many carbons are attached to it. So A would be primary. Uh, draw a constitutional isomer that contains a primary amine. Draw an isomer that contains a secondary amine. And what are the products? Uh, okay, so, uh, so an isomer basically would have sort of the, uh, the same formula, but, you know, again, would look a little bit different. Uh, so we are looking for an isomer that contains a primary and a secondary. So uh, perhaps, uh, let's see what we can do here. So I got this and, um, Secondary amine. So let's do. Uh, so we'll start with maybe the secondary one first. So what I'm going to do maybe is um, move one of the CA3 groups over to our nitrogen. I'm just trying to keep track of everything here. Let's do that. And then we'll move the hydrogen over here. So let's see how I did here. Um, do we still have all the same stuff? So this part's all the same. So we have, uh, <clears throat> we have a carbon, that's good. Uh, we have CH3, which is the same, that's good. I have a nitrogen and two hydrogens and a CH3. So that looks good. This then would become a secondary amine, right? As the nitrogen is here, is connected now directly to one and two uh, carbons. So that would be kind of a C's uh, picture there. Um, and if we wanted to do a primary that's different. Um, so again, we, we couldn't do a primary that's different by just, so if you kind of just did this move here, This uh, essentially would be uh, kind of the same thing as what we got going on above. Uh, so this again would be a primary that's attached, but probably would be a similar type of uh, situation. So we could probably, um, to make sure we actually do draw something that's different, we could just go really extreme here and move the nitrogen containing group over here to this carbon. Uh, so we move that nitrogen over there. That would still leave us now a, uh, a C. I'll do my CH3 just so I don't lose track of any guy. And at this point, uh, we would need to leave an H here. And uh, we would take that second H and put it over here. So this would definitely give us something that is different in terms of name than what we have in the first one. And again, here, this would be a primary in this particular case. So again, remember you want to kind of move things around if you're trying to draw isomers. You want to make sure that you don't end up with kind of the same thing and you could go about naming them uh, to make sure you didn't. It. But probably the guy I crossed out is probably going to be very similar to the top guy. But definitely by moving that NH3 in, we definitely have now created something that is different. And again, so this would be something for B, for example. This guy was C. And lastly, what are the products form when it reacts with benzoic acid? Um, <clears throat> so we'll just take our original structure here. And uh, 
what I'm going to do, I think, is draw out the ending part here. And then we have this guy here. And we're going to react it. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, kind of draw out what they want you to react it with, just the end part of it. Uh, so we'll have O, H, and that's basically our carboxylic acid part of it. And then the rest of it, I'm not going to worry too much about. We'll just kind of leave it like this. So this is uh, what we're going to react it with. And basically what's going to happen uh, <clears throat> in this case is we're going to take out water. So however you want to do it, you can take an H from this guy and an OH from this guy. And basically we're going to take water out when we do that. And what we'll end up getting is everything else gets basically squished together. You just take the water part out. Uh, so basically we will have this that looks exactly the same, this that looks exactly the same, uh, this that looks exactly the same, nothing's changing there. This will look the same, we will still have the H, but now we're just gonna basically take this out, which is our water part, and we're going to now connect in here. So we will connect here, and then we would have what's left at that point by squishing it together. And obviously we would have water that would come out and what we just made here is an amid group. And that's that carbon oxygen double bond with the nitrogen and the hydrogen. Uh, so here uh, we're basically putting an amine together with a carboxylic acid. We're just gonna take out water and squish everybody together. Question on those there. <clears throat> Okay, other questions I could help you with.